So in this video I'll show the process of creating a Windows runtime and also how to make that runtime distributable for uh, uh, from the web so that you don't get any smart screen uh, installer warnings. So first you go up to your developer utilities and add a file. So I'll be using the Teacher's Companion application uh, for this demo. Uh, leave that name the same. Pick a folder. And I've just placed that in a folder on my desktop. Uh, go to your solution options. Uh, create a runtime. I suggest uh, creating an error log as well for any runtime errors. And, and uh, you can set your splash screen and uh, change change any of the information here you want to change your runtime name and also save those settings because uh, just in case you need it later you'll uh, you want your bind key uh, but um, I'll just run that now and uh, your runtime then creates now the simplest way to distribute this now is to simply zip it up the exe file is already signed by FileMaker, so you don't need to sign that. So if you just zip it up and put it on your web page, then people can download that, unzip it, put the folder where they want, which also has the added benefit of uh, generally not creating any user permissions errors. And I'll show you what I mean by that now. So here's my runtime folder that I put on the desktop. And here's my runtime and your actual database here is going to keep the same permissions that you have when you after you zip it up so you go on properties security your administrators still have a right to do full modification before you zip it up you could uh, edit your permissions and add add all users so that's the simplest way to get around it so depending on the permissions of the other person's end machine then uh, then zipping and sending it off is generally the easiest way to do it. If you create an installer that installs this folder into the user's program files directory, then the the program files directory has got special restrictions on the on the permissions generally when they go in, and so your files are going to be read only. So zipping it up, putting it on your web page is the easiest way to do it. I'll just do the zip now. So right click and just send to and use the standard window zipping it's the most universal everything can open it so create a zipped file folder and then put that on the web now if you do want to use an installer then i suggest uh, using something like you know setup it's free and it's uh, very powerful so i'll open you know setup here it is you know setup compiler uh, the only thing is, if you do want to do, go down this route, then you will need to get a certificate that is uh, compatible for runtimes. I'll show you what one of those looks like now. Here you go. So your standard uh, SSL certificate that you have on your website is not going to be enough. So you've got SSL certificates. What you want is a code signing certificate. And uh, those code signing certificates cost... Uh, uh, very expensive compared to regular certificates. So this is Australian pricing. So $250, $250 a year for a code signing certificate uh, to to um, to sign your install package. Uh, otherwise, your users will get the smart screen warning, uh, which is a bit tricky to get around. But I'll go through the process of creating an install now. So I'll go file and new. Welcome to the wizard. Uh, use the wizard. Click next. Enter your details in here for your application name, version number, and so on. Uh, a place to install it. I suggest leaving it on custom and letting the user pick it. Otherwise, if you really want to get into it, you can put in the program files and run a uh, and run some post uh, setup steps in order to give that file the right permissions and I'm not going to go through that whole process in this video I'll just explain to you these are the pitfalls that you're going to have uh, so you might create an installer and realize that it's okay on all of your test machines because all of your test machines have got administrator accounts on them 
But as soon as you distribute it, you might distribute it to a business where the users only have user account privileges and don't actually have administrator uh, account privileges, and then it's uh, the application is not going to work for them. So you've got to get your permissions right for, for your clients. And then get your application main executable file. Your mom's on the desktop. Runtime TC. And now you want all of the files and subfolders. And this is a bit of a time consuming process. So add your folder. Uh, yes to all subfolders. Click on that again. Press edit. Destination subfolder DE. Otherwise, it won't put it actually in a subfolder. And you want to do that with every folder. So do that again. This PC, desktop, runtime, TC, in. So this is the time consuming part. Destination subfolder, the same. You want it to go in the in some fold folder for English. Go through that and do that for all of your folders. Go to your files. Select all of your files here. Except for the executable. And press open. And then you've got all your files. So once you've got all of your folders and your files in, then next, select some options uh, that actually they're pretty fine. Next, you can add a license file information to show before and after installation. Next, uh, pick the languages of your application. Next, uh, if you want to do any of this, uh, you want to have an output folder. And I'll put it in the runtime folder. So that'll be the location of your actual installer. Next, next, finish. And then you can compile the script. This isn't going to work because I don't have all the folders in there, but uh, it will actually create an installer regardless. So save the script. I won't do that because this is just an example. Now I'll go back to my desktop here. On time. Setup.exe. So that's what it's creating. And there it's finished. So if I run that now, it would appear to work. Set up. If I had downloaded it from the internet, I'd get the big smart screen that says this doesn't want to. With the little button that says more info, they can click on more info and then they get the option to override it. So it's a bit tricky uh, for the end user to do the installation that way. But yes. Select destination subfolder and this is going into program files. I, I didn't change that. If you leave the destination subfolder blank, then it just attempts to install it in the location of the file. Uh, you can also do your documents folder, and I'll show you how to do that so that it installs into the documents folder because that's a good place to put it. Next, next, install, and that'll install. And now I have the option to launch my program. I'll see if that works without the folders, and I bet it doesn't. And no, nothing is happening there. Um, so there you go. So I'll open up a script that does work and show you what it looks like and how to also install it into the uh, instead of into the program files location for the installer to install it into the documents folder. Okay, so I'll open my installer script, and here it is. So all of the uh, all of those folders, there's the source, are installing into the subfolder because I changed the subfolders. Uh, you can change it in the text editor too if you don't want to use the, uh, the the wizard GUI to make sure each folder installs into its own subfolder. Uh, but up here, the default der name, if you change that PF to user docs, then it will install into user docs. And, uh, and so this, this script, uh, this inner, inner setup install script uh, works fine, just following the same process that I followed before. Uh, so that's it, that's how to create a Windows installer uh, up until uh, for the zip method 
or for this method that uh, fails the uh, smart screen unless you then use sign tool from Windows to, to put in a code signing certificate that you would have bought from someone like Crazy Domains to bypass the smart installer warning. Okay, thanks.